Hey guys, Winston for Carbide3D here. Getting a finished or nearly finished part directly from your CNC is a wonderful feeling, but some of the coolest projects out there are a result of a combination of techniques. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of epoxy resin ocean waves and beach pours in my social media feed, and that got me wondering about combining the water-like appearance of tinted epoxy with the digital precision of a CNC. So, when I started milling topographic carvings through Carbide Create Pro, I had an idea to enhance my pieces by combining them with epoxy. Here's what I tried. Over on the Tangrams Height Mapper app, I saved a grayscale height map of Hawaii, including the surrounding ocean floor. Then, I cropped this image to a square aspect ratio so I could bring it into Carbide Create easily. I planned for this piece to be about 3.5 inches square, so I set my canvas accordingly. Using the image import tools in Carbide Create Pro, I scaled my height map so that the highest peak in the topographic model was about 0.3 inches taller than the lowest valley. I had a square sketched in my design workspace that encompassed everything so that I could use that to identify the region that my 3D roughing and parallel finishing toolpaths would work within. I used an 8 inch square end mill for roughing and a 1 16th inch ball end mill for finishing. I know that Walnut machines really nicely and easily, so I made my toolpads about 20% faster than the default feeds and speeds in Carbide Create for hardwood. I also programmed in a contour toolpath to cut out my tile from the rest of my stock. At the CNC, I made sure my stock was as flat as possible since I would be using adhesive work holding. If your stock wobbles from corner to corner, it's going to be impossible for double-sided tape to secure it to your bed. The roughing toolpath here went according to plan, as did the finishing toolpath. Here, it becomes apparent just how uneven and geologically active the ocean floor of the Pacific Ocean is. However, because I knew how little actual land would be visible above my epoxy ocean, I wanted to maximize the amount of detail in the Hawaiian Islands. So I sketched a polygonal region around the island chain just to be hit with a finishing toolpath using a 1 32nd inch ball end mill and a super tiny step over of just a few thousandths of an inch. This tightly restricted toolpath gave me maximum detail where it mattered in just a couple minutes. Once this was done, I was ready to drown the world in epoxy. I first gave the walnut a quick spray with polyurethane to help seal it. This prevents air from seeping out of the wood fibers, causing bubbles within the epoxy. Then I mixed up some Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy with a pair of blue pigment powders I thought would look good. This was then poured slowly over my slice of Hawaii, which had been lined with packing tape to contain the epoxy. I made sure I added the epoxy slowly in small increments to ensure I didn't drown Hawaii in an epoxy tsunami as it settled. Viscous liquids like epoxy tend to take a long time to level out. To get the epoxy to flow between some of the more closely spaced islands, I used the point of a dull utility blade to break the meniscus and pull the epoxy into tight crevices. Now over time, as the epoxy starts setting up, convection currents will develop within it, either from the thermal effects or gravity acting on the pigment powder, or shear interfaces as the epoxy settles or pools around the islands and walls. This creates a pigment pattern in the epoxy that I didn't think looked very good. So as the epoxy neared the end of its pot life and was getting more viscous but still liquid, I started adding in swirls by hand. I pulled up a map of ocean currents in the Pacific Ocean and used that for inspiration for how to move the epoxy. If you time it right, these swirls that you introduce into the epoxy will be locked into the final product. Now, this epoxy pour as is is pretty useless because of its uneven surface. To seal everything and open up the possibility of using it as a coaster, I would pour a second layer of epoxy on top. This should be done within a couple hours of the first pour so that the two layers fuse together properly. If the first pour gets glassy hard, you'll want to scuff it up with some sandpaper before you do the second pour. With the second application using clear epoxy, you can readily see a meniscus around the wall. This piece is going to need some extra work afterward to make that top surface level and also clean up the perimeter. So once everything had set, I pried my piece off the table, or I tried to. Pro tip, you should always put a layer of packing tape underneath your pour because you never know when you'll get a little bit of epoxy leakage. I taped my workpiece back onto my CNC and trimmed around the perimeter of it. This was drawn in Carbide Create as a rounded rectangle slightly smaller than the original rectangle. Hardened epoxy is regularly cut with normal woodworking tools, so don't treat it any differently on the CNC, just pretend it's a very dense hardwood. By trimming this piece smaller than the original, I eliminated the majority of that meniscus around the edge. I then just had to use a random orbit sander to take down any remaining high spots. After running the piece through my router table to put a subtle chamfer around the top, I was ready to finish it. 
To restore the epoxy to its former glory, I applied a really thin coat of tabletop epoxy on top of everything. In hindsight, a better option would have been varnish or anything thinner. Epoxy reminds me of anodizing in the sense that these finishing processes don't work well around hard corners. The surface tension of epoxy pulls it away from the edges, leaving it much thinner in those areas. Had I used a roundover bit, this wouldn't be as big an issue. But other than that mistake and a couple small air bubbles I introduced in the second pour, I was pretty happy with the overall result. I did later mill some material off the bottom to thin out the piece, but even without that, this proof of concept piece looked great on a desk. I hope this project gave you at least one idea for how to combine different tools and techniques to elevate your projects. I know I for one will be revisiting this pairing of CNC and epoxy in the future with other islands I want to make. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.